Consider how important having the ability to write a responsive proposal is to you winning contracts as a government contractor. I want to share with you key information you must know, what to consider and questions to answer before creating a proposal to bid a project. For the best government contracting and business advice, make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you're notified when new videos drop right here on the channel happening every Thursday and you get notified when we go live. One of the tips I'll be sharing, I have all my clients use every time they consider a contracting opportunity. And this is coming out of part three of my five part government contracting framework. Let's dive into one of the most important elements that will have a huge impact on your success or failure as a government contractor. All right, so here's the first thing I wanna share with you guys. It's about solicitations, okay? One of the key elements to creating a responsive proposal, it all stems and begins with the solicitation. Now, here's the thing. Solicitations, I have not, well, let me just say, personally, I have not seen one that is always the same. Like, they were exactly the same. So. Every solicitation, you have to, you know, treat it individually and you have to break down the solicitation. You have to be able to analyze, break down what they're asking you for, understand what they're asking for, and then in turn, take that and put it into a proposal um, where you're responding to what they're asking for, okay? So it's very, very important. And one of the most important elements of the solicitation that you have to be able to decipher is the scope of work. I get asked this all the time. People are like, well, the scope of work, you know, uh, can you write that for me? And here's the thing. Yes, we can help. Anybody can help you write it, but you should know the scope of work. If you can't understand the scope of work, then you shouldn't be bidding that opportunity because the scope of work is all about you and performing on that particular opportunity, doing the work that you do, okay? The second thing is about these proposals is what you put in it matters. What you put into your proposal, it really, really matters. And that's why in my boot camp we spend a lot of time on the proposal process itself because it's not something that ideally will when done effectively when done correctly that you can do it in one sitting or ideally in a day or something like that i mean you could kind of hard charge through it i don't suggest it because that's where mistakes happen okay and here's the the, the other thing about proposals and the solicitations that i do want to say is that when you're submitting the proposal, it's a representation of your company. Like it is the first thing that they're going to ideally see about you. So you know how we say um, those first impressions are a lasting impression? Well, that's the same thing when you submit a proposal. If you haven't already built a relationship with the contracting officer or the contracting team collectively, because understand it's more than one person reviewing the proposals, uh, together to make the decision as to who's going to win the opportunity. So you want to make sure you put your best foot forward and know that that proposal is representing your company. It is speaking for you. So you want to make sure that it's intact and it's written correctly. You're responding to all of what they're asking for. You provided everything they asked for and your scope of work is tight. Okay. The other thing within the solicitation proposal that you need to know and be aware of is the term analogy. Terminology. And I dive deeper into this in the boot camp, but you need to understand the terminology because if you don't understand the government lingo, then it's going to be difficult for you to 
create a responsive proposal. Okay, so here's a little sugar for a dime. If you've been submitting proposals and you haven't been uh, winning, like you've done two or three and you're not winning, no positive feedback at all, you need to check that out. Are you understanding what the government is saying? Are you able to break down the solicitation, pull out the requirements? Are you able to then take it and put it into a responsive proposal? If you're not winning, something is missing. Okay, is something in the written or even your pricing? One of the two. Okay, and the third, well, the third part of this I want to share with you is being proactive. Being proactive. I can't stress that enough. You know, a lot of times we're waiting around until the opportunity presents itself. And then it's like, oh, I want to bid this. Let's hurry up and put together this proposal. It does not work like that. And I don't work like that with my clients because if we have not, gotten to the point to where you're ready to be it, you're prepared and positioned. And part of that is knowing how to read the solicitation, break it down, pull out the requirements, then you're not ready to be it. Like we can't just, you know, overnight flip the switch and like, okay, let's do this. You need to be proactive. You need to be prepared for when the opportunities come out. I say that all the time. If you check across the social medium spectrum, I'm always promoting, maybe preaching, if you will, that you need to be proactive in your approach, okay? And that's part of the approach, your approach. So you need to prepare time beforehand to put together your proposal template, okay? And I say that because if you've been doing it long enough, you're gonna find that certain information you will always include in the proposal, but if you don't have it there readily available, it's going to take you hours on end to gather all of that data and information to put into the proposal. Well, over here at the contractor's edge where we hang out, we don't work like that. So you'll already have your template together and ready to go. And it's kind of like plug and play, put it, you know, put the pieces in where they go, but it's already created. And you kind of know what I mean. It's kind of similar if you think about it to creating a website. Like you can't just sit down and bam, here's the website. You got to think about, okay, what's, go what's going to go here? Like what is the layout going to be? And then what will I say? You have to write that content for that section. Then you have to proofread it. And then does it flows like you want it to flow and say what you want it to say? So it's kind of similar to that, just a little bit more detailed though, because we're having to respond to what's being asked and then in turn, put it that way, where with a website, you're kind of just thinking, okay, I want this here. And then how will I say it? But I wanted to give you that just so that you could have an idea of what we're talking about. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to comment below. Yes or no, no or yes. Have you created a proposal for your business before? Okay. Woo! This is it right here. This is finna get juicy. Remember I said I was gonna share something with you in the beginning, stick around. I was gonna share it. Here it comes, okay? So what I'm about to share with you saves me and my clients of wasting time and bidding resources we have no shot at winning. This is a game changer when done correctly. So I'm getting ready to share it with you. Are you ready? If you're taking notes, you're going to want to write this down. And if you're not taking notes, you're going to want to write this down. Grab your note-taking device, pencil, paper, whatever it is. Let's go. Okay. You can do a quick check to decide if it's worth your time to bid on an opportunity. All right? you can easily determine really quickly, I'm talking 10 minutes or less, as to if you should bid on the opportunity or not. Like, do I have a shot at winning this or not? Because if you don't have a shot, why bid it? It takes a lot of time to put together a bid and proposal. Let me just tell you, if you have not before, it's very time consuming. And I say this about government contracting anyway. Uh, it's hard work. It's time consuming, but it's worth the investment.
It's very, very lucrative when done right, okay? So here's one of the things you want to check. Due date. Check the due date. If you're just starting out and an opportunity is due in, say, a week or two, definitely a week, you probably don't have enough time to put it together. If it's two weeks, eh, you may, you may not. You're still going to have to push it and then be re realistic that you're still running your business, okay? So check the due date. Can you meet the deadline? The second thing is looking at the general requirements. Do you meet the general requirements? If you do not, it's a no-go. If you can't meet the due date, it's a no-go, okay? You also want to look at specific requirements as far as bonding and insurance. If you're not bondable, then if you're going at it by yourself, it's a no-go, right? Can you get the insurance that you need to have? And a lot of times that's just a matter of raising your levels if you need to. But you still want to check and see if you can meet if you can meet the bonding and insurance requirements. Okay. Now, if you answer no to being able to meet the due date, do you meet the general requirements? Uh, do you meet the bonding and insurance requirements? If you answer no to either one of those three, move on. Did you hear me? Move on, okay? So there you have it. I've just given you insight into preparing proposals and how to quickly decide if it's an opportunity that you should proceed with or not. Really quickly. This is where a lot of people are wasting a lot of time because they don't go through this and they're spending time putting things together and then, oh my gosh, it's due tomorrow and we're not done. We don't even have our pricing in yet. We're still waiting on pricing and you don't get it and you just wasted two weeks, okay? So you don't wanna do that. Now, if you like to go deeper, because this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? This is just the tip of the iceberg. If you really wanna know how to put together responsive proposals, if you wanna know and learn and be able to do this for yourself, how to analyze, understand solicitations, pull out those requirements, and then put it into a responsive proposal, I'm inviting you to come join us inside the Contractor's Edge Bootcamp live sessions, okay? Not just the course where you just get the product, I'm talking about the live sessions. I'll put the link down below in the description as well, and it's coming here right here. It's FeliciaStreeter.com forward slash boot camp. We're diving deeper. You're going to actually create your proposal inside the boot camp. You'll have the template. You're going to actually break down a solicitation um, in most cases that's related to your business and what you do. All right. So there you have it. Make sure if you have not go ahead and hit the like button for this video if you're digging what I put down here today. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every week when we drop new videos right here on the channel. And until next time, I'll see you right back here real soon. Bye for now.